Welcome to the best merch show of the year. Autocar is bringing you everything from McLaren, Porsche, Volkswagen, Jaguar, everybody, because this is the 2018 Geneva Motor Show. We're going to start with a car that's behind me, which is the new Toyota Supra. Hmm of a fashion. Toyota still are not telling us very much about this car, which will arrive next year after a 16-year absence for the Supra. So this is still a concept. It looks like a racing car, but here's what we think we know, okay? It's got a carbon fiber architecture, which it shares with a BMW Z4 replacement. It has a three liter turbocharged straight six engine at the front, making around 330 horsepower, which should be good for a sub four second, naught to 60 mile an hour time. It weighs around 1500 kilograms. It's rear wheel drive. Toyota wants to make exciting cars. That's what they tell us. They will do so as of next year from around 50,000 pounds. This is the Ferrari 488 Pista. Loads to tell you about this and it's all in the details. This is the follow up to the 430 Scuderia and the 458 Speciale in that it's a special series V8 powered mid-engine Ferrari sports car. It's got a challenge engine, basically that's the race car engine dropped into the standard 488. That makes 49 horsepower more than a regular 488's engine, so it's now the most powerful V8 engine that Ferrari has put in a road car. It has 711 of our brake horsepower, 720 metric. It drives through a slightly tweaked version of the standard gearbox, but the big news is all in the aerodynamics. At the front there is an S-duct. That takes air and it puts it up over the car to increase downforce. There's a larger spoiler at the back to do the same there. So overall downforce is up by 20%. Weight is down by 90 kilograms. Now some of that has come out of the interior. There's loads of carbon inside. There are carbon seats as standard. Some of that also comes from the engine. 18 entire kilograms comes from a lower engine. And not on this car, but we will show you the details of another car. There are some carbon fiber wheels, which are 40% lighter than standard wheels. They cost 18 grand as an option on top of 252,000 pounds that the rest of the car costs. When I say it's a special, not limited series Ferrari, there isn't a limit to the production numbers. It'll just stay in production until the 488 goes out of production. Volkswagen is up to four ID concepts now. We've been seeing ID concepts for years, but this one, it says, it's the ID Vision, will go on sale in 2022. Now, Volkswagen says it is the first Volkswagen that will not have a steering wheel, will not have pedals, but that won't happen at 2022. That fully autonomous stuff will come later. In 2022, what it will come with is electric power, as will all of these ID models. By about the middle of next decade, it reckons it will be selling a million electrically powered cars a year. Why? Well, it can't really talk about diesels very much anymore, can it? There are people evidently with nearly a quarter of a million pounds to spend on a car, but who do not want to be recognized every time they drive it. For them, perhaps, is the Range Rover SV Coupe you see before me. Well, what's the difference? Well, there are no rear doors. It looks quite subtle, doesn't it? But actually, the only body panels carried over from the regular Range Rover are this bonnet and the lower part of the tailgate. Other than that, it has all been redone by Range Rover's SVO department. There is a V8 underneath the bonnet, supercharged with 557 brake horsepower, and they are going to make 999 of these at £240,000 a piece before you start the bespokeness. So it's finally here and there's been a massive crowd around it all day. It is an AMG specific four seat, four door model. It's called the GT4, as you would expect, but what it isn't is an extension of AMG's GT all aluminium platform. Instead, it's built on Mercedes-Benz large platform. And the reason for that is because the gearbox is attached to the engine at the front, whereas in the GT, it's got a transaxle gearbox at the back. Why does that matter? Because all of these AMG GT4s are four wheel drive and it is much easier to take the four wheel drive components for front drive off of the gearbox than it is when it's at the back. Now, there will be a six cylinder version. There will also be two V8s of which this is the more powerful. BMW's eight series has not even been launched yet. And here we are getting more body styles. This is a four seat coupe thing. There will also be a regular two door coupe and a convertible. Engines on production cars will be the three litre straight six cylinder that BMW is pretty famous for, as well as its 4.4 litre V8, even, I believe, the 6.6 litre twin turbocharged V12. That's going to put the 8 Series into somewhere where there's real interesting competition, actually. Anything from a Bentley Continental GT through a 911 Turbo or Aston DB11. Prices, I would guess, could be anything from about £80,000 through to maybe 150 grand. The I-Pace is the first pure electric vehicle from Jaguar Land Rover. It will be followed by an XJ electric saloon next year, and then there will be a bunch of hybrids before 2020 as well. So the I-Pace has an electric range of about 300 miles, 
Jaguar reckons that by the time this car goes on sale in the summer, 100 kilowatt chargers will be far more prevalent, reducing the charge time it needs. The batteries in this are all mounted pretty low and it has a 50-50 weight distribution. Thanks to electric motors on the front and rear axles, it totals 395 horsepower. In all, it's about the same length as a Jaguar XE Saloon and costs 58,000 quid. This was a bit of a surprise today. It's called the Porsche Mission E Cross Turismo. There is a Mission E car in development for production already. This concept car contains lots of the production parts of that. So it has two electric motors, one front, one at the back with 600 horsepower in total, and the floor is kind of all batteries. What this does is it introduces another potential body style to the Mission E range, which is going to be a kind of separate part of Porsche's lineup. So there are some design cues that are going to come from all Mission E's, such as the black and white badge in front of me rather than the colour one. The interesting thing, it's got a 330 mile range, they reckon you can charge that to 80% in 15 minutes, and if you just want a 5 minute charge, that might give you 60 miles of range. Right, you know the Lamborghini Huracan Performante that set production car circuit records everywhere? Well, this is that car with no roof. It has the same V10 naturally aspirated with 631 horsepower. It has a roof though which adds 125 kilograms to the weight and of course that's a little bit higher up so we would not expect handling to be anything like as sharp but it does still retain all of the fancy aerodynamics that made this standard car so quick. So as well as adding 125 kilos it also adds about 23,000 pounds. This handsome thing with people crawling all over it is the new Volvo V60. Now Volvo's range is very straightforward. They've got 40 models, 60 models and 90 models, SUVs and estates and saloons all the way through. So the 60 and 90 are on a big platform. This is a V60. There'll be an S60 later this year. Engines are no bigger than four cylinders or two litres and Volvo is talking about phasing out diesels entirely over the next few years as hybrids become cheaper to make than diesels. This will go on sale middle to late 2018 with a saloon following right about the end of the year. This then is the fastest car ever to come out of Woking, this side of a Formula One car, they say. I mean, who knows, depending on the engine, maybe it's even faster than a McLaren Formula One car. It is the Senna GTR. So the Senna is already special enough in itself. It's a road going track focused car. This one gets rid of all the road stuff and it is a track only variant. Now, sorry, I've got my cheat sheet because it is all about numbers. This has got at least 814 horsepower. That's 825 metric horsepower. That's up from 789 on the standard car, standard car. But the big thing is downforce. This makes at least 1,000 kilograms of downforce thanks to the massive diffuser and the massive front splitter. That's 200 kilograms up on a regular Senna. That's 400 kilograms more than a McLaren P1 GTR, which I already thought was fairly phenomenal in that respect. So they're only going to make 75 of these and it's the only Senna left unsold. But if you are watching this video about a week after we've uploaded it, expect all of these to go as well. How fast is it going to be? Well, we don't have performance figures for it yet, but bear in mind the regular Senna is a car that can do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds and can do 124 miles an hour in 6.8. This has got slick tyres, it's got lowered suspension, it's got a wider track and it also has an uprated gearbox. Now McLaren is not saying that that is a full-on track sequential gearbox race style. I think it's going to be an uprated version of their DCT dual clutch transmission. But who knows, with a race transmission, perhaps it could go racing. So here's another one that they build as the ultimate track car and then make a faster version again. It's called the Aston Martin Valkyrie and this is the AMR Pro specification. So what have they done? Well, they've taken out most of the things that made it a road car. So they've taken out the heating and ventilation, for example, put in plexiglass windows, they've taken out the silencers, all of that means that they've managed to liberate an extra 110 horsepower from the 6.5 litre V12 engine. Now details on that are still a bit scarce, so there is no overall power figure, but I can give you a weight figure which is now down to 1,000 kilograms. So with more downforce, less weight, more power, Adrian Newey, who is the F1 genius behind this car, he says, the standard car, standard car, is as fast as an F1 car around Silverstone. I'm not gonna say how fast this one is, but you can have a guess. So as part of Aston Martin's second century plan, it is introducing one new model every year. By 2021, two of those will be Lagondas as the rebirth of the luxury Lagonda brand. This is a saloon version. You can consider it as a rival to a Rolls-Royce Phantom, but it's gonna be electric only. Now that gives it certain advantages from a packaging point of view. You can see the interior is vast and it is designed, Aston says, from the inside out. Because you can put the mechanicals wherever you want to, you can do the interior first and then design everything else around them. So there'll be a saloon first. There will also be an SUV, which is previewed by a model on this very stand. 
This huffing great rear wing plus the green paint can only mean one thing, it is a GT3 RS 911. Now this is probably going to be the last variant of the current generation Porsche 911, an all turbocharged 992 they're going to call it, generation 911 arrives later this year. So in the meantime, this is it, a way to go out with a bang, it's got rose jointed suspension front and rear just like the GT2 RS, the naturally aspirated 4 litre engine from the GT3 has been upped all electrically and, and with ancillaries, the internals are still the same. So that makes 513 horsepower. It's going to cost £141,000 when it arrives in June and it will just stay in production until production rolls out. Thank you for watching, we really do appreciate it. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We've got videos here every week and we're also at autocar.co.uk all the time.